TradingMedia.com. This is John's report for the 10th of March. Well, there it is. You can see that white line when I drew it there a little while ago because I was expecting this. And that was the start open for the year in the white line. And effectively, that means the S&P is literally a point or two ahead, but negative yield for the year given inflation, which is about equivalent to what treasuries are earning. So if you've got a choice between zero return with uh, potential capital loss, what are you going to choose? Yeah, treasuries. So I think that's going to move things more towards treasuries unless the uh, yield drops significantly. But the Fed has indicated that they have no intention of changing at this particular point. But despite what the market had uh, projected, which was just out of line, and now it's back in line, and that didn't take long. So in a couple of weeks, you've pretty much returned all the gains of the year <laughs> that quickly. And not a surprise, we had talked about that 4,008 and kept butting up against it. It was also confluence because it was right at our uh, Morgan Archie 50%. And with the white MBI leading, that was calling for a move towards zero. It's back to what I was talking about in the shakeout. When we came back towards positive, got to hold it. And as soon as it made the negative uh, histogram, that's all she wrote. And all of this is a return to the low of the dip below the red line. Because we know those get tested. It varies in length how long it is before that happens. But it does happen. So there you have it. That uh, was fairly clean and pretty quick. Uh, strong off that rejection right here that we talked about from the uh, uh, DOC where cyan green met, green couldn't cross over, and that breakdown is very negative, particularly as long as the orange was rising. Um, yeah, and it's pretty consistent. As short-term buyers were the only thing holding things up, and then they started to fade, and that was enough to really start driving it. Um, you know, this is a recognition of the global situation as well as just the erratic nature of where the economy is at this particular point. Um, you know, we're probably ending our seasonal adjustments for all of our labor statistics and stuff. And everyone's been seeing the headlines of tech layoffs and they're not stopping. So um, that's going to start to spread because, you know, as you start getting rid of higher paying jobs, that really has a ripple effect through the economy in certain areas. And again, this is where I talked about that regional effect. And, um, you know, it can snowball pretty quickly. So the Fed may have to change course pretty quickly if those numbers deteriorate fast. And um, the market had pre-bet that early and uh, has transpired as quickly as they thought it might. And um, with the Fed, you know, indicating that it's still going to continue to go after inflation. And, as I pointed out, what was it, a couple of weeks ago when this first uh, began, as long as you're running massive deficits with uh, continued printing, you're not going to really make much of a dent uh, on inflation uh, without driving you know, economic activity to uh, a standstill or even negative. And that looks like where things are headed. So they were... Fighting a tight rope, uh, the Fed was at least, but uh, it's not helping that uh, the spending is still just out of control. So the NQ, much stronger, though, holding up uh, above its 50%, though, we would expect that to be touched because that would be the dip below the red line uh, right here on the extreme where we have those magenta dips. And uh, a little bit better from a DOC standpoint because we have some narrowing of that uh, cyan to green relationship, even though uh, red is rolled over. So that's not going to take much. And you would end up a, a pivot here would give you a uh, higher P2 pivot. And that could be relatively bullish. But uh, at this particular point, they're just weren't any buyers to suck up the uh, extra volume uh, from a treasury standpoint. Um, still elevated and that's just an indication of how much money is flowing into there so the yield dropping just a little bit and it's still way overvalued uh, from that standpoint given where rates really are um, oil taking a softening with the uh, dollar dump and coming back still in the mid 70 range uh, way elevated but relatively speaking uh, you know for the devaluation and inflation it's modestly high, but I still think probably uh, mid-60s is more closer to 
where things are. And that, of course, depends on economic activity. And if you see a significant slowing in that, then uh, you know, oil could come under more pressure, but not to the extent that it would if uh, you weren't uh, running inflation as hot as it is. Uh, from a gold standpoint, that's going to be a net positive because it's a recognition that uh, you know there's nowhere to get a return and inflation is going to keep going. So if you want to uh, sort of combat that, commodities will be an alternative choice. It's just, again, I think a lot of this is going to be that roller coaster hit and miss back and forth, uh, the euro popping a bit uh, off of all this, not as much as you would expect given what the sell-off was, but still um, a slight improvement, though still no reason why anyone would want, want uh, the euro uh, debt uh, versus what you can get uh, treasuries. There's a, quite a bit more stability there. Bitcoin, uh, really uh, on the soft liquidity, taking a nice little dump off that uh, white MBI lead. And that was right at that key uh, threshold here, that 22. And once the MBI lead, it sort of held up at that uh, 61% 22. And once the selling for the major markets, you know, you've got to liquidate profitable positions sometimes to cover exposure in other areas, um, even worse from a uh, ETH standpoint and softening a little bit, but we'll see if that holds up because uh, continued move lower and you may see that uh, MBI white perk back up a little bit. It's pretty easy to see it uh, intraday. Uh, from a 50K standpoint, we had the brief push up towards the 50% Cross back below, and then it really accelerated once the MBI white took the lead, and that was around the 23%, and that just uh, exacerbated the selling uh, further down, and the MBI white still leading, uh, even in where the market is right now. So we would expect those lows to come back. From an intraday standpoint, it was fairly interesting because we had talked about the algo here at the 92, but we had some testing that still needed to take place on the lower levels uh, because uh, we had some retraces that didn't quite come back all the way and you can have a deviation but eventually it comes right back to it and then from that 5k standpoint once uh, that 92 area was tested again and broke below uh, that's where it really continued we got to the uh, 3970 then boom we hit right down to the 57 that one actually had a little bit of confluence it tried to push back up through it again was strong MBI white lead again, pushing back to the zero and did it again. So every little press up was just hit with uh, that uh, MBI white lead. And when that happens, uh, it's pretty straightforward what's going to result from it. We didn't quite come down to the full test of the 39. And so there was a little hope right there as we got back up uh, in the mid range, but it wasn't enough to get to the 38. So once again, once the selling started, breaking through. And now we're at the latest confluence here, uh, which is that 39 and just below it, uh, it's like the uh, 93 range. So we fought back and forth in between there. It's kind of stalled in the pre-market at this particular point. But um, yeah, that's uh, going to be part of the difficulty going forward. And I think that... Uh, you know, the expectation is, is that some of these numbers are going to start to reflect that. And again, if you've got treasuries yielding the same thing the market is, where would you rather be where you have a zero capital exposure versus, you know, guaranteed, well, relatively guaranteed. <laughs> the U.S. is not going to default, so to speak, but uh, they're just going to print more money to pay for the bill. It's one half dozen the other, but uh, it's a bit safer than uh, potentially seeing your capital position eroded. So. That's going to be the uh, counterplay now because before, when treasuries were in the you know zero two percent range, you had no choice; you had to be in the market. So that dynamic has shifted, and I think that uh, uh, we're still overvalued relative to where I would expect. Uh, you know, with the inflation and the adjustment for you know those market things, you know thirty six, thirty seven definitely uh, much more reasonable but uh, even that may be too high if things start to decelerate quickly so we're in for a nice ride this is going to be an exciting march as always though you can look for me on the escape chat and i will continue to update you with relevant details trade well we'll talk to you later